Hi, I'm Janet Deemer, and I first started coming to NAPC um, when a mom friend from school invited me to Tuesday mornings for Bible study. And at the time, my life had just exploded, and everything that I knew to be stable was not. And so I accepted the invitation, and very quickly that group um, became my lifeline. I was also looking for a church and decided to take the boys and to go visit um, an APC and we just started attending. Walking into a church as a person who grew up in a church and always was involved in ministry and at the time going through a divorce, you feel a bit like you wear the scarlet letter because you walk into a building um, and you see families that look on the surface like they're whole, and yours is not. Um, and it was a very hard place to go every week, whether I had my children or didn't have my children. Learning to trust people, even in a church environment, was a big deal because of some of the hurts that had happened in my past. And they embraced us and loved me in particular at a time when I probably felt like I was the most unlovable. And so it became our church home pretty quickly. Over time, they earned my trust. By growing in the relationships between the women in particular and then through small groups, um, I was able to really learn to rely on the Lord for everything. No one told me how to fix it or what to do, but they prayed with me and they walked with me and went with me sometimes places that I needed someone to just support me. Those ladies encouraged me every day to be better, um, to open Psalms and when I don't have a prayer, to read the prayer there. Early on after when I first was divorced, the generosity of a mom from women's group truly changed my life at a time when I didn't know how we were gonna do it. Um, they are, to me, the hands and feet of Jesus, and they totally helped me change my life for the better. So when I started at NAPC, I'm a teacher, so I jumped right in with VBS, any way I could help. And then I play the piano, so it was an easy fit for me to jump into music ministry for a while. But my biggest passion now has become Linden and working with that team and trying to figure out a way, how do we help um, the broken? And how do we minister to them? And how do we um, help bridge the gap between our membership at NAPC and what we will face and do face when we go into a place like Linden, what those families look like. And that to me has been a bit of an epiphany in the last six months in that I think all the things that God allowed me to live through in the last eight years, as hard as they were, He has perfectly placed me in a role where I can empathize with many of those single mamas that we encounter in Linden to some extent. And again, it makes me grateful for the journey because my perspective is able to help bridge that gap from New Albany to Linden just based on the things that I've experienced and I have felt through my own journey. Growing up, we grew up um, in a church that we went to church three times a week and we're very active in ministry. Tithing was a regular part of the conversation, though I don't know how my parents did it at the time because we weren't super wealthy and we had four kids in four years and it was a little crazy, but they did. And not only did they tithe, they always had people in their home and were always helping others and they were very generous. But when you face a divorce and a loss of income and a complete change in your life like that, the thought of 
tithing is scary. And I remember at first listening to the sermons every year by Pastor David about it. And I think my first reaction was a little bit of stubbornness and how is that even possible? But I was encouraged that he continued to admonish us to start somewhere, whatever percent that is, and gradually step out in faith and increase that percentage until you get there. And so that's what I did. And some months were better than others. And sometimes you go forward and then you would slip back. But gradually I was able to increase that. And gradually God continued to bless my life and it was so freeing because for all that time that I was holding on so tightly, all of a sudden, not only did I have enough, I had more than enough. And I find myself kind of laughing about it because you start that tithing process and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, there's this extra person that needs such and such. And you don't even think about it, you just do it. Whereas before, that would be a huge decision. And so there's a freedom, I think, that comes with um, fully putting your trust in, in God and giving Him um, your financial um, means that He has blessed you with. And so I just would encourage anyone to just start the journey somewhere and continue to put step forward in faith in little increments if you need to, however you need to do it, but it's so worth it. And now I understand why, probably why my parents did that way back when, when they probably didn't have the money to do it, but they did because the joy and the blessing that you receive back is just immeasurable. Part of tithing, in my opinion, is about learning to fully trust the Lord with your life. And it reminds, reminds me of this study we did a few years ago, The Course of Your Life. And I remember learning to really understand and trust the sovereignty of God in my life, knowing that His plan might not be the one that I would choose for myself, but His plan is better. And so if I can just let go and trust God with my life and my finances, I know that the reward is going to be great. Whether I see it today or don't see it for 10 years, you, you start to gain this sense of um, assurance just because you let go and you trust in, in Him and who He is and know that the money wasn't yours in the first place. It wasn't, it was a gift from God. And now I finally, gotten to a place eight years later where I am able to turn around and notice a single mom who is also struggling and um, pay it forward. And when they react with the same, you know, overwhelming gratitude, my response is, when you're ready, find another single mom and pay it forward. Um, because I think when you're in the darkest moments of your life like that, you need to know that God is still with you and He's still in it. And I think that little bit of generosity sometimes gives hope um, to someone else when they're probably at their very worst. As we continue working in Linden, you know, I'm super excited for us to have a building and a church because I think we are a little bit at a handicap at the moment in the things that we are able to do. But you know, my own vision is that it becomes a place where people who are, whether they're single parents or widows or whatever, that are just alone can find community there and feel like they are part of a greater family of believers and that we can support each other and pray for one another and celebrate the joys and cry when it's yuck in our lives. But I really look forward to being able to continue that journey with our families from Linden um, and then also with the many who are amongst us already um, that need that kind of love and support each week.
What I've learned the most through the journey is God has a purpose for your pain. And if you give him enough time, um, eventually the sun will come out and you will see very clearly the direction that he has for your life. And I think that is what has made me the most grateful. Finally getting to what I call the other side is that um, once you get there, you start to realize that God never left you anyway. He was still in the detail of all of it and that there was a purpose and there is a purpose. And suddenly you find, I find myself with this new sense of direction and um, passion given what I've lived through to be there to help others, to say God is still the only way to heal. He's the only one that is going to bring you peace and give you direction um, and wisdom when you need it. I learned all of that um, while I was at NAPC, just from being around more mature believers. The wisdom that they have to share um, helps you to find perspective. And so the things that we think are catastrophic and a big deal, you quickly learn they're not such a big deal because it all boils down to, do you love the Lord? Do you want to serve Him? Do you depend on Him in all things? And do you want to share that with other people so that their lives can also be changed by Him?